Well, welcome to the Iowa Presidential Caucuses MOOC. In this session today, we're going to be, quote, digging into the caucuses. So our subtitle for this session is Insights into Past Caucuses. And I'm so happy to have a group of acquaintances and friends with us today. Uh, I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. They're all veteran caucus goers and have lived in Iowa most of their lives and uh, are willing to share with us some of their impressions and, and memories of uh, elections in Iowa caucuses. So why don't we start here? Okay, I'm Bob Lohr, and I'm a retired university professor, and I moved here in 1966. Okay. I'm Barbara Brody, and uh, we retired from the farm 14 years ago and moved into Ames, and we've been, I've been to maybe four caucuses mm -hmm. in my life. But anyway, I'm very interested. I'm Dwayne Brody, and if she's been to four caucuses, I've been to four caucuses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and were you in those caucuses mostly in the countryside out when you were on the farm? or We were in a caucus with you when we were yeah. on the farm yes. at one time. That's right. And, uh, so in Milford Township. In Milford yes. Township, yes. yeah. Because yeah, we weren't that far away, and we were in a caucus with you one yeah. time. And, yeah. and uh, the last one we were at was... Uh, the yes. election before last, when uh, high school. Uh, Obama and uh, Hillary were, were running against each other. Mm -hmm. And you may be able to go to another one with Hillary. Maybe. In 2016, you. maybe. maybe. Yeah. And this public. is... I'm Mary Richards, and for a long time, for 13 years, we were our, the closest neighbors to Stefan. Mm -hmm. That's right. Down the hill and... Mm -hmm. Down the hill and across from the and wild I, rabbits. <laughs> and, and, and across the creek. And Mary... Um, you were a political science graduate from Iowa State University, and then Correct. you went to Drake University and got a law degree. Well, actually, as, there was a joint degree right. program, yes. and so I sort of did both of them right. at this Right, exactly. That's a wonderful program. We have. And then you became county attorney. Yes. And served Story County attorney for... 20 years. 20 years. Wow. Five 20 terms. years. Five terms. How time flies. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes. Well... What we're interested in is sort of the history of the caucuses. I mean, um, the first caucus we were talking earlier that made any news was in 1972 with George McGovern, uh, who basically had the reforms passed by the Democratic Party. Um, do you remember that period at all? Actually, I go back earlier. Yeah. In 1968, when... Uh, there were, uh, were a number of uh, people interested in um, the Vietnam War. Yes. Um, Gene McCarthy mm -hmm. uh, ran uh, eventually. And uh, after he got in and Johnson went out, um, then Bobby Kennedy jumped in. And then after he was shot, uh, Humphrey wound up winning that year. But there was a movement called Get Clean for Gene. Mm -hmm. There were, uh, the counterculture people were a lot of what we were referred to as hippies. Hippies, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came here in, in, in 66, I had a beard. Mm -hmm. And uh, was I it was. the same beard that you have now? The same beard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Because I was a hippie, uh, I didn't oh. uh, use uh, pot. Uh, but the uh, I had been in an auto accident, mm -hmm. and I uh, a lot of uh, stitches in my face, and I couldn't shave for mm -hmm. for a, a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I figured out I was saving a lot of time <laughs> by yeah. not having sure. to shave every day. <laughs> yeah. so, so anyhow, uh, we. Uh, I was interested because I thought that the war was a, a colossal mistake, uh, especially when I found out that Ho Chi Minh had approached the United States mm -hmm. because he was afraid of the big bad neighbor, mm -hmm. China, China yeah. which historically goes back mm -hmm. a long time. And so I thought, well, if we can work with Tito and Yugoslavia to mm -hmm. stop 
the expanse of the Russians. Why couldn't we mm -hmm. work with Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam? <laughs> I mean, in yeah. Vietnam yeah. And, uh, you know, and avoid all, all the uh, bombing and mm -hmm. napalm and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, uh, the, it was pretty well known that the uh, uh, South Vietnamese government was highly corrupt. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so uh, we found out that there were, were these caucuses mm -hmm. going on. And so uh, I was living up on 18th Street on the uh, east side of town at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, we found out where the caucus was, and so we had ended up. Uh, descended on this house, mm -hmm. which was probably even a little smaller than this house. <laughs> and Mary's so, house, yes. Right, right. Yeah. And, and so, uh, you know, I was, I don't know, in the bedroom or the kitchen or somewhere, and the word would be passed on in terms of <laughs> what was going on when, when there would be a vote or yeah. uh, that, this sort of a thing. And, you know, it was t totally a surprise for the because usually these caucuses that were in each of the precincts would be one or two. Actually, that happened subsequent to that years mm -hmm. later. I had caucuses in my house mm -hmm. where <laughs> maybe there were one or two neighbors who would yeah. be the only people yeah. showing up in, in the non-presidential year. Sure. Or the presidential year yeah. would be a big... Uh, presidential uh, years are what made yeah. the caucuses right. Right. famous. Because right. yeah. the other years, it's just party activists who get together to write things for the platform and things like right. that yeah yeah so that was the yeah. even before the 72 caucus right. there was already this sort of movement of uh, people who were upset with the vietnam war and things like that which eventually became uh, a big a push for creating the the actual yeah. reforms of the caucuses right. yeah. after the chicago riots yes th that uh there was uh a lot of feeling against the old boss system. And uh, so I, I believe it was Cliff Larson mm -hmm. who uh, was uh, locally, he had worked with Neil Smith. Yes, our Congressman Smith. It, yeah. And Cliff Larson well, lived was just it, not yeah. far from here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just right. across the ravine. Right. And their little grocery store is in that direction here, a few blocks away, actually, just down the right. hill. Right. Yeah. Right. The yeah. Dugan's Deli, it became. And that right. was, well, that one had poli had deeper political roots th than that, because I think that was Abe Medzvinsky's store. Oh, okay. And, you know, the Medzvinsky's eventually became uh, political names. So Ames has always been a hotbed of, oh, especially, I think so. especially of democratic <laughs> uh, politics. Well, because so. the Mesvinskys are still a political family. Right. Um, and Mrs. Mesvinsky ran for Congress, I think, in the last election in yes. Pennsylvania yeah. or somewhere in Some, lost. Somewhere so, like that. So that little corner down there <laughs> is, a, right. is a, a real political a lot of history, monument. Right? Yeah. Right. Do you remember uh, your first caucus by any chance out in It's probably Milford? out in Milford Township yeah. about the time you were out yeah. there. But I think what I like about the caucus system maybe even uh, is the fact that before the caucus you have the ability to talk to if you go uh, and listen to the uh, people that are running. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a real value because, yeah. you know, you get a face-to-face -face contact and, and decide on that then whom you wish to uh, cast your vote for. So you're talking about even way before caucus night, you get yes. a chance to talk yes. to Hillary Clinton yes. or to mm -hmm. if it's a Republican, yes. a Republican, when they come through town. Yeah, Dean and Hillary and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember Dean being at uh, uh, the uh, alumni center, or uh, right over here, and, yeah. and uh, we all got to come in and meet him. And then you can go someplace else and meet right. another person. At, somebody's uh, living room, for goodness. Yes, sake. or in mm -hmm. somebody's uh, living room, depending have, on who. Have you what. had anyone in this living room? Not in this living room. It's not quite big enough. But I've been <laughs> to a lot of living rooms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where yeah. you know where you know retail politics is is close to home. Yeah, mm -hmm. very often it's just a setting like this, maybe a few more people than this, and these candidates come and they hang around for a little bit and you ask them questions and mm -hmm. 
they try to give you an answer that you like? Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yes, so if we are, in a way, Iowans complain about about being inundated by political candidates, you know, starting right after the, the last, last election, election they, yeah. it starts again. But actually, I think we're all pleased mm -hmm. that we get mm -hmm. this chance to actually see people and, and as Dwayne says, judge them up close and personal. Yeah, that's, that's, their, how that's, their personality yeah, comes through. That's worth a lot, I think. It is, right. it is. Uh, and to me, more than the caucus, you know, but the caucus brings it about. Yeah. Well, on caucus night, you get to say which one of those mm -hmm. you actually like the most, well, right, totally. in the Democratic caucus, and you try to get other people to, to agree, agree with, with you. you. Yeah, right. Right. Come over and sit with me. Yeah. Come over and sit with me. And, and this is why I think you should support so-and-so. Yes, yeah. right. Uh, right. It's, it's, right. It's actually our uh, discussion. I guess maybe not argument. Yeah. Discussion, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, that's, that's that. a value. And, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, know, if you and I were visiting a bit before the official interview started. Yeah. I remember the first caucus where they did the proportional voting. You know, if you get 15 percent, then you get this many people out of your caucus or whatever. <laughs> And I, it was, there were quite a few people there. Mm -hmm. We were in the basement of a church mm -hmm. in this neighborhood, I think. And everybody was confused. And they, they were trying to read the rules, and, you know. And people were laughing, and it was, it was a circus the first yes. time around. By now, everybody know how, knows how it works. Mm -hmm. But that first time was... A, a struggle. <laughs> well, in the Democratic Party, it's kind of complicated because it is. you don't just vote and that's it. Yes. You have to have these viability numbers mm -hmm. and someone has to do math with a calculator yes. because depending on how many people show up, you get so many votes and you and your candidate is viable and if you don't get those you have to merge with someone else yeah. right and then on the second yeah. time around well if you only yeah. have if your precinct only has three delegates right. you have to decide how those three delegates are going to be apportioned right yeah. I, i've had to <laughs> explain to people sometimes and said you know they their candidate is is not viable and, and they want to go and i said no wait you can you can still, you know, the, it's not over right. if you stick around and you team up with, with somebody else who, you know, the, the, that when you go to the next stage, you, you know, can, from the precinct on to the, you know, the larger, the county and so the forth. To sure, right, right, yeah. that, that things can change, you know, this is just a snapshot well, of, the, of a larger process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but a lot of people just, you know, they're mad that, that they didn't. That that, that mm -hmm. they their, their candidate is is uh, not viable, and so does not have a direct uh, percentage or uh, proportion. Yeah. But I said, you know, you know it, it, you know that there are ways in which you can eventually wind up getting your with your, your candidate your actually candidate, being represented. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but you know, you have to be persistent. And yeah. you have to understand the rules of that, right? <laughs> right? Because if this is the caucus and your candidate doesn't make it here, I can support your candidate and maybe your candidate will peter out at the next level, but my right. candidate mm -hmm. will have a lot of right. support there. Right. right. So it's like a chess game. I mean, it's, right. it's, yeah. it's uh, pretty sophisticated. Really also, a lot of times there's not a great deal of difference in terms of what the different candidates stand for. Mm -hmm. They're all Democrats. Yeah. So that, you know, it's it's not that difficult mm -hmm. to, to to do things. You know, for example, I have switched who I've been supporting mm -hmm. because there aren't enough votes, mm -hmm. but I'm not against all these other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I see merit in them, and then I'll go to the next the one for the one I have feel is is going to be the best candidate sure. of the, of the of the people that remain. I remember for one time uh, I was one of the few who was speaking for uh, Senator Simon from Illinois, yeah. and uh, I, I thought this guy was. I mean, he was so squeaky clean that they weren't <laughs> going to find any dirt on him, and which the, the other side is always going to try to do. Mm -hmm. So. 
uh, I, I knew he uh, had an extreme long shot uh, because he didn't have the name recognition, and you know you had to dig to find out about you know, what this yeah. guy's background was. But um, you know he he didn't survive, uh, so yeah. I wound up you know uh, supporting someone else. Yeah. I forget who it was in that particular year. Well, I bet you yeah. you probably met him during the course of the of the campaign. He was actually I didn't, but I you know I I, I follow politics when I yeah. when I have the time and, and uh, the um, different magazines and, and, and so, so forth. Well, now the internet yeah, sure. has, has one of, one of my yeah. close friends, uh, Claire Keller, was talked into being a precinct chair in his part of Ames. Mm -hmm. And it very soon, very near to the caucus, he got a telephone call. And the telephone call said, uh, Jimmy Carter would like to speak to you. <laughs> 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 and so he gets on the phone thinking that it's a prank. Right. But it really was Jimmy Carter mm. talking to him and asking for his support at the caucus. Oh, yes. <laughs> So you can't do that in California. <laughs> no. uh, you can't, yeah. you know, there are no precinct captains to call. Well, there are, but you, you have to buy huge television ads and spend millions of dollars. Oh. And here, Jimmy Carter was able yeah, to just make right. a phone call to a, a bunch of precinct captains and mm -hmm. personally talk to them, which is unheard of in, right. in much of the rest right. of the country. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you remember any, any interesting stories like that? Well, the thing that I think about, too, is uh, pre-caucus, We've had people in our home trying to then convince him mm -hmm. of a of a candidate, uh -huh. uh, and uh, you know just neighbors and friends that we thought we could convince to think as we were thinking, mm -hmm. and then invite them to come to the caucus also. But you know trying to sway them before before the caucuses, and uh, and I've enjoyed the caucuses, the give and take of of discussions in the caucuses. Right. The last, you know, the last one we had that I mentioned was when Hillary was running against mm -hmm. yeah. Obama, and of course everybody was shuffling back and forth pretty yeah. good, and the yeah. and, and I was really amazed at the uh, number of people. I mean, we had that yeah. city oh, was, uh, 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 lunchroom just yeah. packed, and Ames City's Ames, uh, Ames High's lunchroom's yeah. pretty big. Yeah, you know, and you just kept shuffling people back and forth and. Mm -hmm talking to them so it's interesting it's it's an interesting process well that year um, the Democrats had a turnout that they'd never seen before right. it, was it was something it was like two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. people across mm -hmm. the state yes. right. which was twice as much as any other year mm -hmm. so do you think that if you have two really interesting candidates like Obama and Clinton you can pump up the enthusiasm for people to go to the caucuses more than Oh, I'm normal. sure that's true. I'm yeah. sure yeah. that's true. Right. Uh, yeah. In fact, that's one of the frustrations about off-year elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What can we do to convince the people that the off-year elections mm -hmm. right. <laughs> are as important yeah. as the presidential year elections? Yeah. Because they really are. You know? There will be the people who are representing you at the local level, which, mm -hmm. for, for instance, mm -hmm. our student body does not realize how much effect the Ames City Council has on their lives. Right. Mm -hmm. No, they, it's just not in their radar. And, and I think a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. what an influence local elections have on their lives until something happens that they don't like. Right. <laughs> you know, then they realize Then it's it. too late. Right. Right. Then it's, it's too, too late. late. Then right. it's too late. That's right, exactly. Yes, yeah. and in this last election we had a, a U.S. Senator, a Senate seat, mm -hmm. an open Senate seat, mm -hmm. which should have pulled out lots of people yeah. to the polls. Mm -hmm. And it was a very low turnout. Yeah. It was a, That's the, really disappointingly low. In the twenty fourteen election. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. The turnout was very low. I think the campaign Before. was so nasty that a lot of people just stayed home. You know, they just didn't want to participate. I have an advantage. I never watch the T V yeah. ads. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Do you do you watch T V ads? Not so no. much or I use fact check a lot. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm a strong believer in fact check. I don't want to believe a lot of things. Yes, and uh, the fact check that I use 
uh, slams both parties. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's got to be fairly good. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it isn't just one-sided because something comes up and yeah. But you can put that bookmark that on your com on your mm -hmm. computer and. Mm -hmm. And go in and ask the question: uh, Is this right? Is this right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and and get a pretty good answer. And so. they have the Pinocchios too. The where one they, I asked on that you get knows. one Pinocchio yes. or four Pinocchios yes. if the yes. candidate yes. is really not telling the truth. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, but that takes some effort, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, well, not yeah. much. I mean, uh, yeah. you're home in the evening, and you. Yeah. Can, I think the Annenberg is the one that sponsors the one that mm -hmm. I use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can just click on that and. Yeah. and uh, you know, you can blow some falsehoods right out of the water real yeah. quick. Yeah. You know. But you have to be interested in yeah. it. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. You have yeah. to be motivated. The people who are here. Sure. Are. Well, I can understand the part of the problem, um, you know, uh, being a professor at Iowa State. Over the years, I noticed the students were doing less of what they had been asked to do to mm. prepare for the class. Mm -hmm. So I started asking, well, do you have a job? Mm -hmm. And more, as years went by, more and more hands went up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, how many hours a week do you work? And yeah. you know, 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week. That also went up. So because with the, the, you know, the, the larger trend of, of the shrinking middle class, mm -hmm. the uh, low wages, the, the and, and of course the kids have grown up with the computer, with the the iPads, the smartphones, and so forth. Now and um, you know all those things cost money, <laughs> and, and they need a car to drive to their job, yeah. and, and so they if they're going if they're serious about their classes. And you know, really uh, succeeding and 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 just surviving financially, and even then they graduate with this big uh, debt. Debt, yeah. you know that, that no. uh, well, the time that they have to follow the uh, de the, the politics and debt is, yeah. is very limited. I, I yeah. know yeah. Uh, for years before I had tenure. And I was a single parent with three children. Mm -hmm. I had very little time yeah. for local politics. I knew it was important, but I was relying yeah. on those those tenured faculty <laughs> who had been around and, yeah. and and were very involved in the local mm -hmm. scene to to vote in my you know to to take, to, for, to, to, <laughs> to, to hold be in my interest. And yeah. I, I would ask yeah. when when I would have the the chance to vote that that, that you know when the voting come up I. Mm -hmm. Go to those people yeah. that I knew and say, you know, who should I vote for? Because yeah. I I hadn't followed these things and I didn't yeah. know these people. And that's true of a lot of people, yeah. isn't right. it? They hold down yeah. several jobs right. more and more. Okay. You know, yeah. um, you have to work more hours, and that takes a toll on their time and interest and ability to get involved in in in, in politics, perhaps. Uh, so. What other stories do you remember? Any blizzards in there? Come on, make up a good blizzard story. <laughs> and the, oh. the pickup truck going in the ditch out there, and you having to hitch up your draft horses and pull it out. Pull it out, the old draft horses pull out. <laughs> That's right. No, not for a caucus. We had to do it on some other ones, you know, but uh, not on a caucus. Yeah, well, I, I know around the state that's happened yeah. oh, a yes. lot yes. on caucus night because mm -hmm. it's in January or February in Iowa, mm -hmm. and that can be a mean, mean weather. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I remember one year, this is before the caucus, and we were talking about Dugan's Deli uh, yeah. before, and uh, I had lived in the neighborhood and I'd gone in there mm -hmm. at, at, when it was just the, grocery, the local grocery right. store. So anyhow, I walked in uh, after work, uh, I think it was probably a Friday night, and um, I was going to get a, a, a sandwich for, and, and a drink for my mm -hmm. supper, and I walked in, and and and, and Cliff came over. He says, "Hi, Bob. Come on. I, I want you to meet somebody." Mm -hmm. and, and, and and so I went with him, and there was this fellow who's even taller than Cliff. Cliff was a pretty tall fellow, mm -hmm. and, and this guy was about you know, six five, and 
and it was, it was uh, Mo Udall, Mo Udall, you know, who yeah. had who was a representative in in Arizona, right. and um, uh, was a Democrat and, and uh, had played professional basketball, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so so I, I was introduced to him, and Cliff says, uh, you know ask him some questions <laughs> and this is I, I my my head was full of you know my own personal sure. life at that point sure. and, and 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 I stumbled around quite a yeah. bit but uh it, you know I'd heard of uh, of Mo Udall but I I certainly wasn't expected expecting him to join me for supper <laughs> no and only in Iowa do you Would run that into happen? presidential yeah. candidates at the local deli right. uh, who are there you know trying to meet a few people and sell their message mm -hmm. you know which is pretty unusual uh, not only uh, presidential candidates mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's true in other states but uh, you know we have an opportunity to work with our senators too and stuff you know yes mm -hmm. I've got to work with uh, Harkin on, on uh, crop insurance for farms mm -hmm. and and I've got to talk to Grassley. You can walk up to either one of them, and, yeah. and uh, they'll recognize you. They travel the country, and I don't know—is that possible in the other states? It certainly is here. It's certainly less, less frequent than here. I mean, we are a state, and we live out. We've lived out in the country. I still live out in the country. Where if a car comes at you or a truck, you go you, like you this. Yes. You don't know if you know the person or not, but just in case you it's a neighbor, you just wave, wave at them as <laughs> you go by. And, you know, that leads to this kind of thing where the, you know, the senator uh, wants to make sure that he or she, we don't have any she senators, has touched base and knows mm -hmm. who's who and mm -hmm. recognizes you and is interested in answering your questions. I mean, in, in Iowa, we even have an expression uh, called the full grassley. And the full Grassley is named after Senator Grassley, and it means that you go to all 99 counties in the state uh, at least once during a year or something like that. And so that's pretty uh, unusual, I think, in some of the Texas or Florida or big states like that, um, where you do it through the mail and you do it not personally like this. Um, but we do have a woman senator now. In Iowa. We do have a woman <laughs> yeah, senator so. now, and the Democrats thought they would be the first to have a woman <laughs> senator, senator, but it but turned out we, to be it, a Republican. It turned out to yeah, be Joni a Republican. Ernst, uh, right. uh, and she involved all of the Iowa things, the castrating hogs, and <laughs> yes. you know, putting on uh, yes. bread uh, bags uh, on her shoes. Her mom would put those on there so their Before feet would get wet. The boots. Yes. Yeah, that, 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 that I, I, I use a high beam bag that for it. Wait, you were, <laughs> yes. you were asking for stories. Well, when we moved out into the country, you will remember our 46 Chevy pickup truck. Yes, I do. Ethel. Yes. Ethel provided the transportation for Tom Harkin to go around. Really? The, yes, in the, the county. I remember one, one That's time. Wonderful. He That's wonderful. a beautiful old, That rusty, was in 72. Dark, black. I think I still see it parked there at, at some place. <laughs> no, so. actually, it was sold when I when I moved. I sold it. Yeah, but I think I, I see it parked at, at another f place out there. Oh, no? really? Yeah. Oh, well, that <laughs> I'm was, pretty I, sure. I, I, I yeah, hope it is still existing. Yeah. Well, at any rate, that was 72, the yeah. year he did not win. The yes. Ruth won yeah. when she ran as county attorney. And 72 was the year when the caucuses first started, and George McGovern came in third, I think. Um, but that also is the Iowa caucuses. You come in first, second, or third, and that's pretty good. If you come in fourth, you're finished. And no, McGovern right. came in third, and I think that's where that whole myth started, that you can come in third, first, second, or third. and still go on to New Hampshire and do okay <laughs> there. And, you know, if you can keep doing okay, you can win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In, 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 when we, uh, let's see, it was 84. Um, I walked into Larry Larson's house. Mm -hmm. There was a meet and greet there. Yeah, Larry and, is uh, Cliff's brother. Cliff's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and Cliff, Cliff is deceased now. Yeah. And uh, it, it was again after work, and I walked in, and the, the the main group of people hadn't arrived yet, but there was George McGovern standing in the living room, mm -hmm. and, huh. and so yes. <laughs> So I went over to talk to him. I thought, you know, this guy's, you know, run for president before and so forth. 
so I started asking him uh, about, you know, if why he was running. He says, "Well, you never know, you know, what's going to happen." But I said, "The polls show that you know your your chances are very, very remote. I mean, you you, you the you know what you know you've, you've got to have particular." Purpose, mm -hmm. and and he said, well, yeah. He, he said, there's a lot of things I believe in strongly, and I want to make sure that the party doesn't lose sight of these mm -hmm. things. And so he says, if I wasn't running for president, mm -hmm. the press, nobody would listen to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Right. But so you know, as running for president, you know, I mm -hmm. I can express my points that they, they can be out there in the paper yeah. and that can nudge the yeah. whoever does win sure. in a particular direction. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I was going to say just uh, Saturday night, Bernie Sanders was in a living room here Vermont in Senator, town, yeah. the Vermont Senator, mm -hmm. who is, you know, there's a draft Bernie. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bernie Sanders in 20, well, 2016, would run as a Democrat because he's actually not a Democrat. That's right. He's, he's an, an independent. independent. He's, he's an, an independent, independent, but he's actually but, but, a... And yeah. he, he caucuses with the Democrats. Yes. So yeah. I would suspect that if, yeah. you know, that the, the the movement to draft Bernie yeah. is a is mostly progressive Democrats. Democrat. And yeah. is that uh, just because we're looking forward, obviously, to the 2016 race as well, and you may get a chance again to have to make a decision between Hillary Clinton and somebody, somebody else, else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, if she True. decides to run. Mm -hmm. is, do you like the idea of more people running than just Hillary Clinton, or what's your feeling on that? Mm -hmm. I think that it's healthy for the party uh, to yeah, have yeah, a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really yeah, do. The, the, uh, um, I think it works well in terms of sort of focusing and, and, and centering the, the party and in terms of not overlooking some <laughs> dimension uh, of, of what, what needs to be done mm -hmm. by the government. So Hillary you Clinton know. doesn't represent all the Democrats' views, does she, in a place like Iowa? Well, I, mean, I, I think even if she did, you know, how would you know you know, unless there were other candidates you know, to bring to bring this out? Know. And when I said I think it's healthy for the party, you know, I think maybe I would change that to say it's healthy for our political system, mm -hmm. for the country as a whole. Mm -hmm. To you have know. more than one person. For the democratic sure. system, yeah. small d. Well, if you read, the, d. If you read yeah. the papers today, you're reading Republican, Republican, mm -hmm. Republican. Mm -hmm. right. And so they're getting to set the message. Yeah. If we don't have a competition so that we mm -hmm. get something going, then the message is going to be set and we're going to have to rebut it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Democrats so need to begin the, to talk they need about to begin it. To, yeah. They need to begin, if yeah. they're going to, they need to begin... Yeah. If it takes another candidate, fine. But we need to get, mm -hmm. get things moving to get our point out or you're going to be defending. Yeah. So at, well, this, at this point, yeah. when the video is viewed by the thousands of people that are going to sign up for this <laughs> Internet class, which is what we're shooting for, actually. This is called a massive open online class, and it's right. free. And we're expecting literally thousands of people to sign up for it. Yeah. Um, we something will have happened by then, but where we're speaking right now, Hillary Clinton hasn't even announced no, that she's going to run. No. The Democrats are sitting Nobody waiting to, mm -hmm. to, right. to see who might run, whereas the Republicans at this point, at least here, already have a whole bunch of people who clearly are mm -hmm. are going to run. And they're and, framing the discussion. And they're right. they're getting all the news coverage and, yes. and, and discussing all the issues. And um, so so it's interesting to see how far out because we're, we're almost a year away from the caucuses as we have this discussion here. Mm -hmm. when, when we actually run the course, uh, it'll be a few months before the caucuses. Um, we're already seeing a lot of what you like, which is that early visiting by mm -hmm. candidates mm -hmm. coming and meeting people and so on. And that's only happening for the Republicans. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly that's right. Yeah. And we're not, we're not establishing our, our, yeah. uh, our views and what we want to have discussed. Yeah. And if we let them establish it, it's awful hard to get the, the boat turned. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's what uh, Obama's State of the Union was really about. about. He knew that these mm -hmm. things were not going to get passed by the Republicans, but he's, you know, he's saying these are the things that the country needs. 
and and so he was, you know, starting that process. Yeah. It 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 takes you know a certain amount of courage to to go against uh, somebody who has a lot of money uh, uh, as Hillary you know has yeah. because of her husband having been president. There's you know all those people who gave to him and so forth mm -hmm. that. It, you know, to stick your neck out and 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 go against a, a, a strong candidate like that is is difficult, and, and that's when McCarthy ran, uh, Eugene McCarthy. Yeah. That um, you know he went out first, and then after he showed up with a large percentage, uh, you know, you know, getting. Uh, a lot of support in Iowa and in New Hampshire. It was shortly after that 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 Lyndon Johnson said he wasn't going to run again. Yeah. And uh, then Bobby Kennedy jumped in. Gene mm -hmm. McCarthy was was mm -hmm. a little miffed, uh, you know, his ego because he he had started. You know, he had stuck his neck out and. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Kennedy hadn't, and, and but yeah. then, then he jumped in, and, and you know, uh, uh, and a lot of he attracted a lot of people who were uh, who had been backing uh, uh, McCarthy, so yeah. Yeah. the anti-war faction. So sure. uh, the you know that that as I say, it it it's it, there are people you know the the politicians they. They understand this a lot better than I do. Mm. You so know how how the thing works. But I, you yeah. can see the you know wh why uh, you know why people are reluctant. So there for are, 2016, yeah, you think are, Hillary Clinton is so well funded and well known that people are maybe kind of discouraged yeah. to to try to compete yeah. with her. Yeah, yeah. We I have a couple though that have already announced. So well, we there are a couple yeah. who are showing signs mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now they need to obviously gear that up and yes. compete with the massive Clinton yes. uh, fundraising machine, which is yes. which is pretty formidable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do we have anything else we want to wrap up with? Anything that's on your mind that you think people who want to know about the caucuses would be interested in hearing about? I, I called them or thought about it, and I was thinking they're they're really a serious social because yeah. it was a social gathering right. to start with yeah. and I don't know we didn't eat food at ours mm -hmm. but I think <laughs> you mentioned that yep. but we did have duties that had to get done mm -hmm. and um, you know the sooner we finished with that business sooner we talked to can um, somebody into being a del being a delegate Del <laughs> which, was the, which was the case sometimes out yes, in the country when you only had half a dozen people right. will you be the you know please <laughs> be a delegate yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. We politics can be a sacrifice, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Right. Yeah. The, the, no. My my late wife and I spent a lot of time, and well, often we we were meeting in the high, uh, Ames High School, mm. uh -huh. and you yeah. know the the people would not understand the process coming. It is you know mm -hmm. great that, the, 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 yeah. but then people running the show would bend the rules so that everybody could. Say whatever they want, <laughs> and so you'd start at eight in the morning, and you'd go till five, six, yeah. seven in the <laughs> evening. Yeah. You know, and it, it, you know, you just say, yeah. The certain people, you, you think, oh, don't, don't give, don't, don't open that can of yeah. worms. I mean, this, right. this is yeah. not going to go anywhere. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'd like to get out of here. Sure. I have things to do. And <laughs> the social the aspect whole day of, was that shot. you mentioned, which is true, the social <laughs> aspect is. Um, people actually like going to the caucuses because they get to see their neighbors and friends and talk mm -hmm. to each right. other and so yeah. sometimes the politics is sort of on the side because you're catching <laughs> up you know what happened you know with your farm and you know yeah. what what's right. going on here what about corn prices this year and yeah. you know too bad that crime is up in Story County <laughs> and how are your grandkids doing right yeah. Yeah. and oh we've got to do a vote here for the caucuses so there is that part, which I think a lot of people actually think is what's nice about it, is that mm -hmm. it is kind of yeah. politics, but it's it's not cold like going in a primary it's where you just fun. go vote, but you know, you actually... It's a fun time. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. enjoyable. Exactly. Yeah, well, the, the, the things that would go on would be 
have to, usually have to do with the platform committee. Right. Right. And then, you know, say, you know, this platform is going to go to the next larger stage. Right. <laughs> and, right. And, it, it, you know, that the, uh, you know, they argue over a word or a phrase yeah. or something, and it really wasn't going to mean anything down the line, but yeah. people were passionate yeah. about their beliefs, and, and so it would go on, which, you know, it's interesting yes. in a way, yeah. but, but not very, you know, always... Not uh, very Not if productive. you have other things to do. Right. Well, that's right, not very productive, right. Yeah, yeah. well, um, let me thank uh, our, our wonderful group of neighbors here for sharing their stories and their perspectives on the Iowa caucuses, and I think that you will have learned some things that you can't really find out any other way besides drilling down to the to the actual people who participate and lead in these events. So thanks so much, folks, for doing this. You are welcome. You're welcome. Thank you.